Okay. So, uh, what uh, is uh, within this chapter is, uh, and, and then this is the second part of chapter 11. And we already seen uh, some uh, extension for uh, normal regression models. So basically, these chapters, uh, the learning objectives are how to extend normal regression models when using categorical predictors, more than one or two predictors, using interaction terms. And then finally, we see how to compare, uh, to evaluate and compare models the result of this type of models. So last time we saw uh, how to um, uh, make a normal regression model, Bayesian uh, te um, techniques and uh, with categorical predictors. So but now we, we jump into using more, uh, more predictors in our model. And as you can see, uh, so we are still using uh, the temperature uh, in Australia. So what our objective is to uh, basically predict afternoon temperature level. Uh, so at 3 p.m. more specifically uh, in Australia. Uh, and so the result um, that we found is that um, so we have two locations, uh, Wolo Wong and uh, Uluru in Australia. And uh, what we found so far is that uh, temperature is positively associated with morning temperature. So afternoon temperature is positively associated with morning temperature. And then uh, the, the temperature tend to be lower in Wolo Wong than in Uluru. Now, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to add more predictors. Okay. So, uh, and this is another way to extend the model. So basically we extend the model, um, we use two predictors, uh, the temperature, but at the same time we use um, the same, so uh, first we use or the temperature at 9 a.m. or the location. So the temperature at 9 a.m. was regular normal regression model with one predictor. Uh, and then when we use um, uh, the location without temperature at 9 a.m., so always one predictor, but we use the location. So we use these categorical. So we extend the normal regression model to categorical predictor. What we are going to do is now add two uh, predictors. So the temperature, 9 a.m., and the location at our regression model with Bayesian technique. So first things, that, uh, first step we do, we do a little um, data visualization. And we see that, uh, uh, so, both locations, they, there is a positive, what we already mentioned, okay? So positively they are associated and temperature tend to be lower in Wolowong than Uluru, okay? Uh, this is going to be the third model, okay, that we uh, build. Uh, and, and so the first one was just with temperature. Yeah, I'm going to say this again, the second was with location. Now, the third model is with temperature and location. So we're still using Stan GLM, uh, the data weather. Um, we didn't go back to the, the data itself, but as I said, we can even have a look. Um, the data, there is these two locations, the wind speed, the humidity, the pressure, uh, 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 the temperature, and all this information at early in the morning, 9 a.m. And what we are going, we want to predict is the temperature level at 3 p.m. based on these other predictors. For now, uh, we use the, the, these two predictors. 
uh, on this data. And the family is Gaussian, because we saw last time the reason why it's Gaussian uh, and uh, uh, it's behaving normally when we simulate um, uh, on, a, on a large scale. Uh, this uh, is our prior guessing based on the average value uh, of the temperature, which was between 15 and uh, uh, 25. No, I'm not recalling exactly, but so we actually calculated uh, this uh, uh, base. Uh, th this is the 25 is basically the mean, uh, the average value of the temperature at 3 p.m. Uh, calculated on the minimum, the maximum value of the, the temperature. And uh, so the other uh, prior uh, is set to normal. And uh, uh, this, this is the intercept. This is for the coefficients, the other betas. Uh, and this is the uh, exponential. Uh, so uh, we suppose that our sigma, so standard deviation or white noise, or uh, so the residuals, is going to, they're going to be uh, behaving exponent, so have a, an exponential uh, trend, um, distribution. Okay. So then we had, uh, uh, as usual, this, uh, uh, some other options, which are the chains. I didn't say that too much, but this is why I'm going to repeat this. So the chains are the number of ways we, we run uh, the model and the iteration uh, within each chain uh, we, we set to an higher level. And then we set the seed because it's going to be random. And then here, uh, it's a new uh, thing. So basically, we set the prior to true. Uh, if you can see, uh, now I saved the model. And um, we can see the model prior. Um, so basically this is uh, the result of our model okay so uh, i am in the uh, visualization of the model result and so here is the formula and these are the results so the median and the uh, madness of the um, standard deviation uh, and so the temperature, the intercept, and the temperature and the location. Um, result of the model. And as well as the uh, variation of the uh, random uh, noise. And so we see that if we use this function, add predicted draws, okay, then what, what's happened next is a bit like repeating of those things. Okay. Um, so this, this function uh, from the posterior fit prediction, uh, add draws, from the posterior fit prediction or residuals of a model to a data frame. So basically, we have this model results. Okay, so we add the predictors, the, the predicted values from this model to our data set. This is like, augment or something like that so but we set this to a certain um, number let's see if we have more information in the uh, details so we have some some uh, model and this really is values for estimation of the coefficients and so we can add predicted draws 
from the posterior predict predictive distributions. Okay. And we can see, for example, uh, 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 so we set uh, uh, the predicted growth. Okay, we can set uh, N or not. So basically N is the uh, number of growth. Okay, if I just have a look at this, this is random as well, so I need to set the seed. Uh, let's see, uh, basically, here are the draws. We have the chains, the iterations, and the prediction. Okay. So if I now I'm going to use this in a, on a visualization, and I'm going to use the prediction, uh, group it by draw, and uh, I do a uh, have a look at the density. Okay, this is a uh, nice to see that uh, you know uh, some somehow it's very. Uh, you know, uh, so some somehow there is a um, a certain variation for uh, lower level of density, but then the 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 variation shrinks uh, for for the highest values uh, of densities. So when uh, the probability density is its peak, so the variation is very uh, thin. Um, and so I think it's, uh, in, in that condition is going to be more predictable. But, uh, and, and so basically what, what we did is so far is simulating 100 data sets from our model. Okay, which are the draws uh, uh, starting from our assumptions, which are the priors uh, that we set. And so we can see that our prediction density, it's uh, behaving um, uh, this way. What, what the um uh, book says about this uh, what the book says about this uh, okay so basically um The um, for each we display density plot of the 3 p.m. temperature alone, and this is the other one. Okay, so this is the just the temperature, and so we see the density. But I can't see much. Uh, well, let, let, let's let's go back to um, where we were. Okay, so going forward, uh, if we now uh, plot the uh, temperature at nine a.m. Versus, so the temperature at 3 p.m., so the, our, our response variable versus the temperature at 9 a.m. But then we group it then by location. This way, it's a way to see our model uh, with, mo with, two, with more than two, than one predictor. Okay, so we can see 
that this is the uh, basically what's happened in, in the two locations. Okay. And, um, and this, all these lines are the draws. So our hundreds of simulated uh, outcomes. Uh, are there any questions so far? Um, so as I said, um, if we use, uh, so before we use prior PD in our model, uh, as you can see, okay, prior PD equals to true. Now, what we do is to, is to use prior PD equals to false. So basically, we update our model with a prior PD equal to false. Uh, this way we combine prior assumption with simulation. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, across all 100 scenarios. The 3 p.m. temperature results positively associated with AM temperature and tend to be higher in Ululu than Wolowong. And this is what we know, okay? So in fact, this is the, the result. So our intercept uh, and the two, um, uh, the two, the temperature and 9 a.m. and the, the location, um, Wolowong, which is the reference and the Ululu, which is the other one. So basically for, this is the add, because these are the first three uh, models. So we have so 100 models across 100 scenarios. So these are the first three scenarios. And we can see that uh, Wolo Wong, it's uh, seven times less uh, than uh, uh, Ululu, the temperature in Wolo Wong. We have uh, uh, about 2.4 uh, as a, a res uh, residuals variation. Uh, and as you can see, it's about uh, the same if we look at just three, but if we look at more, uh, more or less it's the same. We can even uh, consider the, the average of the residual and see uh what, what is uh, um on 100 scenarios and so uh, uh, as you can see uh, even the intercept varies within uh, a certain values and um again temperature 9 am is always positive so um here we see that under those assumptions, so the temperature and the location, we can see how they group to each other, even if we see that there are a couple of two uh, Wolo Wong values that gets into the other. Even here, the Hulu values, uh, they are uh, outliers. So, uh, in general, so they 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 have this trend. What, what we are interested in uh, looking at uh, is the uh, what uh, it might happen in the future. So we expect that the temperature is higher in the afternoon if it's higher in the morning. So having a look at the posterior intervals. As I said, uh, we can see that they range between, uh, they are always positive or always negative for Wolo Wong. As I said, the temperature is lower uh, and they varies within this, these values. Um, okay, so then um, we can even uh, 
um, set uh, a specific temperature. Uh, so have a set a new data frame and see what's happened. So for, for example, temperature in the morning is 10 degree in both locations. Uh, and so we, we use new data. These are new data. And we want to see what's happened with our model. Um, okay. And we can even see that it is... Uh, uh, so this is uh, okay. Releasing some some uh, the results that we use uh, with the function. Uh, this is the Monte Carlo simulation areas, and then we plot it, and we see. That then again, if it, even if the temperature uh, is the, uh, for new data is is the same, all along is always. Um, lower in the afternoon than Oluro. Okay. Uh, and then, so this is uh, simulated uh, with Monte Carlo simulations. Okay. Uh, then, okay, this is the interaction time that I was, uh, that I mentioned it before. So now we are not going to go much in deep about this. But it, uh, it's interesting. Um, if we have a look at the humidity, so as when, when we look at the uh, data set, so we had some information. We had the wind, the humidity, the pressure, and then the temperature. So if we, um, um, we have a look at the humidity, okay, as uh, how if humidity influences the temperature at 3 p.m. Okay, we see what we see that they there is a, a an interaction point here, so they interact with each other. This is fairly interesting. So we can use humidity as an interaction term, and this is what we do here. So this is our model with this interaction model. We have location, humidity, and then location humidity, the interaction term. So we run the model, uh, the same as before, without spe specifying uh, so all the things that we did before. Uh, if we tidy, so because la last time didn't work, I don't know what didn't work, I don't know why, but it works normally, the tidy with the things. Even uh, the other one for the, the the last time, I don't know why it didn't. Um, but anyway, so this time works, and uh, the interaction model we can have a look at the effect, the estimation, and the standard error. Uh, Wall Wong is still uh, uh, negative, so even even if we thinking about uh, humidity. It's always uh, uh, negative, so it might be an interaction uh, term because it's uh, consistent with the model result. Uh, and the humidity, uh, uh, it's negative, so it means that we have uh, uh, the temperature is lower when it's humidity, uh, and uh, and so this is the positive uh, interaction between uh, location and humidity. Uh, what else? Okay, I don't know if there's any questions or concerns or discussion that I want to raise about this. Um, no, no, I, no questions from me right now, but this all looks good. Yeah, um, then uh, again, we simulate, 200 scenarios uh, about, uh, uh, as we know, that this is a prediction. Uh, and so we see what's happened um, with this um, uh, interaction term. Uh, we see that, uh, that, so even if within 200 scenarios, uh, so they interact to each other. Yeah, this is... Um, Okay, so I'm not 
going back to uh, another data set to have a uh, like um, talk um, uh, more uh, interesting discussion about interaction terms and, and how and when and it, it could be useful to to use in the model. Uh, but we just go forward uh, with our uh, data set. And uh, we now want to use all the predictors. So we so far we, we used, uh, we had a look at humidity uh, and the location, but don't forget that we got wind speed, wind speed and pressure. So we, we are now going to use all of them. Uh, and we use um, our, this is our fourth model, uh, temperature, 3 p.m. PM is going to be predicted uh, against all the predictors that we got. So location, wind, and so on and so forth. Um, the rest uh, and this is uh, the, uh, the summary. So much but if we have a look at the Monte Carlo simulation tracing uh, plot um, so we see that the result is consistent and the density for different predictors um, so and then the um, um, so the correlation, okay. Um, let's have a look at this function. So this is, uh, uh Uh, autocorrelation plots, okay. Uh, autocorrelation plot by chain and parameter. The lag argument gives the maximum number of lags at which to calculate autocorrelation function. And this is a line plot. Um, so this is the maximum value so that we don't uh, uh, basically, one is not um... okay. Can you see the Can you see the plot? Because it says it's both. Yes, like you were saying with the auto correlation plots, we want to make sure that there is. No autocorrelation beyond a lag of one. A lag of one is the Markov chain assumption. But as we can see in the autocorrelation plots, as as long as we don't have any additional spikes or data beyond a lag of one, things are looking good. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm back here. Uh, and uh, if we use posterior interval on our fourth model, we can see uh, that our results are um, so basically. Uh, when we add predictors and even interaction terms, okay. the first uh, things that uh, let us uh, think about if there's any uh, wrong in our model that we can, uh, that we should like um, think, put more attention or think about a, a little more, a little bit more carefully is uh, if our uh, starting points change the uh, sign. Okay, if for example, location Wallowong, let's say for adding other predictors 
changed its sign. So it became positive, let's, let's say. So it might be uh, something to be more investigated within this data. But as, uh, our results so far are consistent. So we can uh, you know, go forward. And this is what we did so far. Uh, our first model, uh, just with temperature 9 a.m., second model location, temperature 9 a.m. location, and all predictors. If we now want to evaluate the results, we can see that the four models, uh, within uh, all the four models, so what, can I, can I ask you, what, what do you think is the one that, that it's better? Yes, I'm surprised by this picture. I mean, off at first glance, it looks like all, most of the pictures are pretty similar. Of course, we're looking at that second um, or mode in the graph around 35. So we're hoping that the Markov chains um, get that. So as you were saying, models three and four look a little better because they're trying to um, do something more than just a bell curve. Yeah. I think it's um, the, the first two models. Yeah, I, they, they uh, so it's it's quite better if, if we use all the predictors basically. But we, we risk uh, overfitting somehow. Um, so here, what we do, it's evaluating uh, the accuracy uh, through a, vis a visualization. And um, if we use this um, posterior predict function, and um, so we see, that this is the, the main line. Uh, we already talked about the, these things. And these are the, the interval variations. So it basically grabs most, all, all information except some uh, outliers. And even here, this is a nice violin plot. We can see with new data, if we use the, the weather, so our data as a new data, and we test the model on our data, so on our observations, we see that we grab uh, uh, almost all, all the information. Yeah. And then uh, what else? Uh, so here uh, we do the same thing, but... Uh, um, Okay, this is, uh, um, because this is model three. Okay, I didn't say that. This is prediction one on model one. Okay, this is prediction one on model one. This is prediction two on model two. And we use the violin. And this is prediction three on model three, and we see um, the, in, the, within the two locations. And then uh, if we summarize the, the result for, uh, this is done just for model, uh, for model one. Okay, we see that we have a mean average error of 3.2 or 3.3, and these are the data. So we can see that in general, let's have a look at this again. So we do this uh, into K uh, 10 um, equals to 10. And so then when this takes a bit, 
But then we use this uh, the result for, for, for each model uh, to have a look at the to evaluate the predictive accuracy and the ELPD for the four models. And if we let's see if it, it takes a bit, but in case so it releases some some uh, information based on k equal to ten. If we have a look at the chapter, okay. So two predictors post the, the interaction term and uh, using uh, all the predictors, and this is what uh, we did, okay. So these are the results and everything. So now, basically, when we are going to evaluate predictive accuracy, we can do that with cross-validation. And this is the, the, the K10 that is doing cross-validation. Takes a bit. And then using ELPD. So the expected log predictive density densities and um, we use the the loop function leave one out uh, function to compare then the estimations and what we see that model four is the first on the list then model three and then one and two. Okay, so model four seems like the best. Okay, but then it mentioned something like overfitting. And when we go forward to see the BS variance trade off, um, Filtering some temperature, the temperature lower than 30 degrees. And um, so we have a look at some uh, visualizations. Let's go back to R and see if uh, she is still, is still running because maybe with the connection, it takes more time than usual. But so far, so it's doing cross validation to, and we so far we had a, a quick look at, oh, okay, the results are there. So this is with cross validation, tenfold cross validations. So we see we have a mean absolute error of 3.3. .3. And in, in general, uh, within um, um, so the, 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 the mean absolute error is uh, about 3.5 so as an average. And um, yeah. and as well, the, the scaled values. So, and uh, with, if we use, uh, uh, the leave one out, um, we can see that the weather model four and model three are the first two uh, models, but then basically we need to uh, consider uh, overfitting um, and uh, the bias variance trade off. And so uh, we need to have a look at the performance uh, across different data sets, okay? For, but now we are using just one type. So we first simulate the posteriors for each model, and then we calculate row and cross-validated posterior prediction summaries for each model. What this means is that um, our data set is now filtered by one location, Wolo Wong, and with temperature lower than 30 uh, Celsius degree. 
what's up then? Um, and so we can have a look at the uh, sample one, which is the head, and the sample two, which is the tail. Okay. If we do a quick uh, visualization, so the first visualization is this one here. Okay. We can see that the temperature based on the day of the year, it's uh, this is oh, in a year at 365. Okay. So from day zero to uh, 365. You can see that the temperature is starting to be higher and then uh, going down to go back up again. Uh, and this, uh, the, the lower uh, point is around 200, 150 to 100 days of the year. Okay. And um, uh, we use sample one, okay, which is uh, this the 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 head. We have mean temperature, max temperature, rainfall, and um, and all the other informations. Rain today, day of the year, okay, and um, we now add to this uh, visualization uh, this moon. Let's have a look at this uh, body. Uh, and some uh, other diff different type of smooth. One linear, one uh, simple uh, poly squared, uh, x squared, and the other one is uh, uh, with uh, 12 um, as a polynomial. So. so as you can see, this grabs almost of the, the, all the points, but uh, it might uh, uh, turn out to be uh, uh, a little bit that if, if we try this, as uh, uh, with new data, we might not be able to guess exactly the the the, the next point. Basically, um, and so now we test. Uh, we repeat the the things that we did before. We create model one, model two, model three, uh, and now I need to go back to the book because uh, uh, as you can see, this is a um, high bias and low variance. This is a nice balance within the two. So basically this uh, trend, this andament of the, the, the smoothness, uh, the smooth, uh, it might be able to guess uh, the location uh, of the the next uh, point if you use new data, while this other one has a low bias but high bias. So it might be possible that the next point is up here instead of down there. So, uh, so we need to uh, think about this um, uh, trend. Um, and um, so for, for this reason, we have a look to evaluate the models. Uh, we create other, other three models, model two, model one, model two, and model three, okay, with this polynomial. So the, with this di different, uh, basically, uh, the first one is just with the day of the year. We have a look, what is the temperature? It's just a, a base on the day of the year. Uh, and uh, the, the other uh, two models are with polynomials. So what, is, uh, what this means, it's a transformation, uh, such as if, even if we use the log, the log of the day of the year. So we use a polynomial, which is a sort of uh, a spline, 
So it is a spline, uh, a transformation of the data that will be able to um, uh, grab uh, as much uh, information as possible. And in fact, it, it does with, tw with 12 as a coefficient for, for the, the third model, but it might lead to overfitting. So it's, it's too, too, too much uh, preciseness, there is too much preciseness for guessing the next uh, value time. So uh, even here, uh, we have a look at the, the summary for all the models. So model one, model two, model three, and even the result of the cross validation. And here this, the, it's a summary. So as you can see, model one is the uh, first on the list. Uh, so it's the one that uh, basically, if I'm not saying wrong. Um, so these are so far the results. So model one is 2.8 and the other one are lower. Uh, as well as the gross validated uh, mean absolute error, it's consistent uh, with, within the two models. I stop sharing, and uh, I like to see if there's uh, any uh, thing that we want to maybe uh, have a look or um, discuss about that. Those things. Uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate the explanation of, of why we're going through the different models, and really like that section at the end to talk about the bias various trade off. It's Nice to get the machine learning in here as well. We do have about eight minutes. Um, was there anything more that you wanted to talk about, about the interaction terms? I know you were um, thinking about Yeah, that. Um, but not, not for today. Um, not sure. I need to uh, maybe um, think about that more. I don't know if you want to. Uh, it's a, um, uh, just as I said that it's an interesting argument and uh, it, it, it would work to um, uh, go back to uh, have a look at the even the other data set because it's mentioned in the chapter basically. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.